Uh, good morning everyone. Today we're going to talk about direct ophthalmoscopy. This is a very useful tool. We use it at bedside, we use it at the clinic, and it's a very nice portable device. Uh, the device is just a, a source of light with a hole. Uh, whatever you are seeing here is just an extra accessory. The uh, principle of this device is that the light coming from infinity will hit the retina and uh, light from the retina should go to infinity in an emetropic eye. So if you don't have a refractive error, this machine will uh, allow you to visualize the optic nerve and the fundus in a very well uh, manner. Now, uh, just um, um, to give you a briefing, first of all, we just put a, an energy source uh, in the device. And now you can see the green button here. Okay, so the green button, you just, uh, in order to um, uh, operate the machine, you press the red button and then you just flip the uh, handle and voila, you have a light source. Okay, so this is, a, uh, this is how you operate the machine. It's very important always to make sure that uh, your um, refraction should be at zero like this area here if you can just focus more the, uh, the the camera you can see here that this is zero okay this is actually the best way to do it now if you roll the uh, uh, the handle clockwise you can see it's becoming red which means that it's uh, bec uh, the, then you're adding a minus power lens if you are going to the green zone this is a plus power lens and you can use the uh, uh, let's say the minus or the plus power in order to uh, let's say clear up the view in front of you uh, in, uh, in front of the retina uh, in cases that if you are if you have a refractive error or the patient has a refractive error okay so um we we said that this is a light and a hole the magnification of the direct ophthalmoscope is totally dependent on the eyes of the patient which means that, um, for example, if you have a, a power of 60 diopters, if the eye is around 60 diopters, if you divided that by 4, then you can get something like 15, <coughs> uh, 15 times of magnification. Uh, if the patient has, for example, uh, 65 of accommodation which means that the patient might be myopic, myopic in this uh, case by around five diopters then the magnification will come higher by around 16 times if the patient is, is hypermetro for example he has hypermetropia of a 10 for example then the power of the eye is around 50 which means that the uh, magnification will be 50 over 4 which is much less uh, so the um, Magnification in this machine is totally dependent on the eye of the patient and uh, it's not dependent on the observer's, uh, uh, on the observer's eye. Uh, now, when you are looking in front of the, uh, if you are looking at the patient, uh, the first thing that you have to do is to check the red reflex, which we will be doing it shortly. And then you go inside, as you go inside, you follow your red reflex until you see the blood vessels being cleared up. Try to, to loosen your accommodation, try to relieve your accommodation, uh, try to um, uh, imagine yourself looking far away. Because if you are accommodating or you are adding a plus power, this will uh, disturb the uh, optics of this machine and you'll start uh, to see blurry images and this is why most of our students don't see anything in their first trial because they are not relaxing their accommodation they're not looking for far so it's very important to look for far and then you go inside and uh, start observing things 
Now, um, and then uh, try to look, uh, try to move your head as you are inside in the, uh, in the fundus. Look to the right, look to the left, you will see the optic nerve, which is around 15 degrees away from the visual axis. And then you go, uh, you ask the patient to look uh, in the light directly, and this is where you can see the macula. Tamam? Uh, what else? Now, this is most the, the image which is created by this machine is erect, it's, um, it's virtual, and it's magnified, as we have talked. And um, it, it's a, uh, it's, it, the nice thing about this machine is that you can use it as well as a bedside slit lamp exam. Because you have a uh, very beautiful, you know, you can add like a plus 10 or a plus 15, for example, you can check the anterior segment, you can check the cornea, you can check the lens of the patient. Uh, the red reflex per se can give you a very detailed examination uh, of the uh, patient's lens. And actually it is the most um, accurate uh, exam that you can get uh, in your examination. So I hope that this covers the briefing. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope to see you soon in the um, uh, step two uh, when we do a live demo. Thank you.